<laughs> um, but um, in my case, and I knew a lot of people because from New York I used to go to clubs. But I, so mm. I, I actually, it's all about who you know. So I, I do actually have enough of juice, if you will, and I think you will, to get in. But I walk up so like apologetically and like I'm not worthy. I just reek of that. <laughs> so I, I just sit in the back of the line and like pick my nose for four, four hours once. That was a lot of picking. Wow. And she had a hard time too. If you, I, I, we know somebody that we both don't like. Oh, that, awesome! That used to that used to that got in a fight with you one time or said some nasty stuff to you because they felt like you were writing for these. Oh yeah, people think I go to meetings for that, which is ridiculous. Right. Like, but whatever, it's they don't know over about. a fight. No, no. no. People oh. think I go to meetings so I can be like, oh, so and so was. Oh, so you can t- I write, write the right. Yeah, oh. exactly. Which well, I, that's that brings up sort of a so, big part of our right, which is the our I, topic of the day today. Yeah, anonymity. And I know for anonymity. sure she never. You know, I it, there's some people you could t- truly say would or wouldn't. Susie would never go to a meeting. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. You and, know me. Yeah. And, and I and said I that to you right away when that you. person said that. I was extremely. If you knew the person, the person. I, I can't say his name you because gotta write it down. I can't even say the what we call him as a joke because it's like Beetlejuice. you'll know like, right away. Right. Yeah. But we're talking. There's a there is a great article in the New York Times this week about anonymity. Yeah, it's an article by uh, David Coleman. It actually just came out, I believe, yesterday, and it's called "Challenging the Second A and AA," and it talks about how the anom- anonymous part of AA <laughs> is now sort of out of date. I would totally disagree with him. That's part of the article. That is, <laughs> <laughs> I I just think in the old days people don't under people really don't realize this, and the they used to give their last names in right, meetings. Right. in meetings because how were you supposed to call somebody up? Were you supposed to look up Frank in the uh, yellow pa- in the white pages? <laughs> like you know, right. just call Frank A or Frank you know with a nickname. Call Frank the mailman. <laughs> you know, so they would give you their Mail last maker. names mm-hmm. so you would be able to look them up if you needed to call. But even now, though, don't you think it's sort of the line of um, I mean, so many people have written books. It, like this article, right, right. talks to you know, Nikki Six has written a whole right. book about his experience. Talks about AA. Um, we just have pe- you know famous people coming out all the time, right? Saying oh. so, you know. Is, but did, but did, and, and a lot of what this article talks about is that a lot of the reason that there that there was you know this secrecy around because the dogma. Well, the well the, moral, the stigma. Right, the stigma. The stigma of being an AA and being an alcoholic, and that the, like that. Shame based, and it, yeah, and it said that it was comparing it to being gay, and that in the gay community, that for so long people wouldn't come out of the closet, and it wasn't until people were right. more open and came out of the closet, a lot of the stigma was lifted. AA is the new gay. AA is the new gay. That's basically <laughs> what this article yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, it's evolving into a place. You know, it, thanks to people like Lindsay Lohan or whatever, right. it's actually evolved to a place where it's, it's kind of glamorized in the way that like heroin chic was glamorized ten years ago. So right, it, with you know, waif models. But, <laughs> but, yeah, but I think it had to. Good. I think it had to in a sense yeah. because listen, I don't know Nikki Six's reasons for writing, but but because of the Lindsay Lohans, because of the Charlie Sheens. There needs to be at this point celebrities that are actually doing well <laughs> in the sober in the sober department that are like, listen, this thing actually works. Yeah, we need right. some reps. Because you know, Andy Dick isn't exactly the torchbearer yeah, exactly. for what's for what's right about the yeah. twelve steps. And God bless Andy Dick. You know, very talented. Used to love him on news radio. But that's where the problem in lies. The anonymous part was that people were getting on the Late Show, right. going, "I'm sober." Right. Oh yeah, and, and then uh, two weeks or not. Right, but you know what made AA famous, and I don't. A lot of people don't know this, but you know I don't know if you've ever noticed at meetings they have these pamphlets that these you know the pamphlets, and one of them is called the Jack Alexander article. Mm-hmm. The Jack Alexander article was written for by by Jack Alexander for the Washington for the Washington Washington Evening Post, which I believe at that point was the largest publication in America. And Norman Rockwell, you ever see the, in many 12-step meetings, they have, you know, two sick guys, one sick guy in bed, two standing over him. That was Norman Rockwell that painted, that did the, uh, the, the portrait. Oh, yeah. And when Jack Alexander wrote that article, AA, it, it, uh, that Monday morning, AA was flooded. Alcoholics Anonymous was flooded with phone calls because mm-hmm. they, they, nobody had really, it was a little group in Cleveland. There was a little mm-hmm. group in, all of a sudden, this guy wrote that there's help for alcoholism. So I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, to me, it's, it's about that um, 
you know, when I started my career, I started really mental health. I started working in psychiatric uh, mm. hospitals mostly, and I have a you know a master's in social work, and I worked in acute care psychiatric hospitals. So for me, it was always about the stigma of mental illness. Mm. Um, you know, working with schizophrenics, working with people, you know, the homeless mentally ill, working with people in prisons that were clearly mentally ill but had just been locked up, and nobody was really looking after them. Um, and I see so many things still happening related to that are really issues of um, mental illness, like the whole um, thing with gun control and gun control being blamed for the Virginia Tech shootings when clearly the kid had a history of mental health problems. Right. But no, everybody talks about gun control, but nobody's talking about mental health problems. Guns don't yeah, kill no, people. Yeah, that drives me crazy. Guns right? don't it's kill like people. Lack of Lexapro yeah. kills and, people. And, <laughs> and I think, and now I think <laughs> and, right? You should just put it in the drink water. But I think that you know, it's so obvious to me that you know, guns obviously are dangerous, but mental illness untreated is obviously more dangerous. No, I know. I right. think you it's know? so weird that people, all these experts are speculating it's because of the media and it's because of the video games. No, yeah. it's, there's one answer. It's, yeah, it's, it's mental illness. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> and, just, and I also believe that comes from people's need yeah. to to have a, a reason why things happen. You know, it can't just be because they're born crazy. <laughs> you know, right. some people are just a little kooky. Well, I think the mental illness is prevalent and people are scared of it and they just don't want to talk about it. The other thing is politically, as a politician, it's a lot easier to get votes talking right. about guns control or, the mental or, illness. Or, or fighting for gun rights than it is to address the issues of mental illness and, and, and mental health care. We're in the studio with uh, Susie McCompin, uh, Playboy. <laughs> Playboy. This, this uh, is the first time that you've actually spoken about her and the story's been true. <laughs> 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 um, even when I'm trying to be good, I get knocked. Right. Uh, we're in the studio with Susie McCoppin and our host, Andrew, and our co-host host, Andrew Spanswick. I love saying your name. Yeah. Andrew Spanswick. It's just Andrew it's Spanswick. very it's got like that Polish bond. And it's Scottish. Um, Scottish bond, I'm sorry. <laughs> Scottish bond. Scottish Polish. Even, yeah, or even though the new bond is Scottish. That right. must make you proud. Yeah, you know, it actually does actually. A little Do you bit. Scots like have like you know a little there's, chat room? There's like actually like this you know little club. It's like any group, you know, any ethnicity. Why? Who's the new Bond? Daniel Craig. Yeah. Oh, he's Scottish. Yeah. Yeah. Get the hell out of here. Well, Sean Connery, of course, was well, the best Scott of all time. He was. No, I actually, you know, I gotta say, I'm I'm starting to like Daniel Craig more than I did uh, Sean Connery. Ah, uh, okay, get out of here. Um, With that, we need to go to a break. I and, can't, uh, I can't <laughs> handle that one. <laughs> And the number here is 877-8830-877-8830-830. We're in the studio with Susie McCoppin, and uh, you're listening to Clean Radio. It's Clean with a K. Yes, here we are. Oh, yeah. How do I, For the how Block back Boy. In, back on Clean Radio. For the Block Boy. Yeah. Judah ran out for, was that a quick smoke break? Quick. Yes, yeah. it, was a, it was a quick smoke. Does your mother know you smoke? My mother knows I smoke. So how do you explain the smoking with, like, sobriety? How do I explain the smoking with sobriety? Well, <laughs> i got to be honest. I am not uh, getting into smoking accidents. Right. <laughs> Although I've learned that you can't smoke on a scooter at the same time. <laughs> you were it's trying pro- to smoke on your scooter? <laughs> yeah, I was, and I'm like this. The cigarette's <laughs> coming out of my helmet like this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. You had, I've seen your, your helmet. It's yeah. a, a full face visored helmet. Yes. And you were smoking while driving your scooter. <laughs> yes. With a full face visored. Yes. You deserve to be dead right now. And, uh, well, <laughs> and. <laughs> I mean, that's and, like, that's like that. What is that Darwin list of like the dumbest things people ever did that got themselves killed? This, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been like in the top 10. No, I don't you do like, it. I don't. You would have been like number 50. I don't do it. An honorable mention I or don't something. do it. At, I don't do it while I'm actually going i do it at lights <laughs> that's awesome at the light i stop at the light and i light up you're definitely an and, um, I, oh, without a doubt uh, I, I don't think we've any well i told you my way of knowing that i was i'm a total addict was i was on an airplane about uh we in, in the studio with, let's, with let's, us now let's introduce amy Amy Tozer? Amber. 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 I'm sorry. She I'm is, looking okay. wrong. I'm thinking, oh, whatever. Like the, You're married to I Amy. I am married to Amy. That's bad. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that one. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Amber. Yeah, like so, the Amber Alert. Like the Amber Alert. That's right. Well, Probably like, not a good reference with your name, though. <laughs> right? It's like yeah. if your name is yeah. Katrina now. I know. Amber it, used to be sexy. Now yeah, it's like, now it's like a girl like is missing. Right? I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> poor Amber. Do you guys <laughs> know the number one cause of pedophilia in America? 
Uh, drinking. Sexy toddlers. <laughs> oh, God. Sexy toddlers. It's no laughing matter. I was like the name sicko. Amber. <laughs> so Amber, you're Amber a comedian. Is the color of your energy. Yes, and I'm a comic. Yeah, you are a comic. Well, whatever you want to call me. Whatever you want to call you. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, I've changed your name twice already, so you, yeah. why not Why not just change your profession? I'm George, and yeah, I'm right. a custodian. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so you were on Last Comic Standing. Yes. And I guess that was before you got sober. You mentioned to me earlier. Yeah, I was. Uh, that was right before. It was a couple months before I got sober. When, when By the time it aired, I had I got sober, but when we were filming, I was slightly drunk or really hungover. Do you think that pushed you over the edge, the show? I, no, well, I don't know. I was really, I was just full of fear the entire time. It, except instead of being really excited about the experience, right. I was flipping out. And of course it's nerve wracking because it's like national television and a huge opportunity. But I just remember being so hung over. And you know, like oh. when you're like shaking and right. even e- e- the sunlight scares you. Right. So th- so I just remember being really hung over and, and just so mad at myself for getting so drunk the night before a huge opportunity. Mm. So it did mm. it did stick with me. That show shows like that to me seem very difficult. I which mean, last which last comic standing two thousand eight, right? Two thousand eight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was uh I got sober I think it filmed in January 2008, and I got sober in March, and it aired in May. And I just was like, it was, I was on my last few months. You weren't standing anymore. Yeah. But I'm. Ha ha, good one. <laughs> I oh. was standing. I had to stand. So you got sober. What was that like for you? Well crafted. Getting sober. Uh, I, don't, I wasn't planning on it. I, I had reached a point to where I was like, I knew I, knew I had a problem, and... I just was like, I'm just gonna have to drink for the rest of my life. Maybe I'll die a little earlier. <laughs> maybe you know, maybe. Right. But um, Not a bad trade-off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys have that? Who yes, I did. Like, yeah, totally. did you? Were you just like, this is the way it's gonna be? Mm-hmm. I really did. I think most are. Every yeah. alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like sort of live to die alcoholic. <laughs> right. Well, that's yeah. what the, the, in the book it actually says. You know, in the AA book it says a spiritual life or an alcoholic death isn't always an easy question which is basically like right. die in a pool of my own urine happy life yeah only for an alcoholic is that really a difficult question <laughs> yeah or an unfortunate yeah. prisoner yes <laughs> or a fetishist oh wow yeah, golden. of course the playboy sick. Nice. author sick. has <laughs> another answer I'm impressed <laughs> you're welcome I'm feeling stumped that's what's happening I'm feeling stumped you're coming up with things she's that I actually think very of. quick she, um, she's I, you don't, are look, look, I think looks aside show 13 I am getting I am just getting stumped oh. on looks every aside bit. Susie McCoppin is a very bright woman very bright that's yes. what I was saying everybody gets a lap dance <laughs> <laughs> I Even was like, you, she's Amber. a fast talker. I'm really slow. Yeah, but I sound like an auctioneer. That's not. Uh, that doesn't <laughs> yeah, really yeah, matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Depends what you're auctioning, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <fair enough. laughs> Who wants the ball? Anyway, game? so we were talking about uh, you getting sober. Oh yeah, I I got sober um, end of March. Um, what do you want? You want to hear about the last time I drank, or just uh, the just, whole thing? Uh, what was it like? Look, you know, all of a sudden you get sober, then you're looking back at yourself drinking on TV. That had to have been kind of surreal. Yeah, it was, I don't know. I mean, I think when I got sober, I didn't plan on it. I just woke up one morning. I was in San Francisco. I had I had probably 12 drinks the night before, and I did Coke, which, oh, yeah. I, which I've done a handful. I've always hated Coke. I was just like, I've done it a handful of times. But that night, I couldn't stop drinking, and I couldn't stop doing Coke. Right. And I was like... And 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 I didn't do anything stupid. Well, I drove over the Bay Bridge, really wasted. That's which is pretty. Stupid. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that could be, that okay, could be, constru- that could be construed that. as dumb that, by a that few was people. Stupid, okay. but very lucky outcome. Yeah, yeah. I was in and out of a blackout driving over the Bay Bridge, and wow. then I went to a friend's house and drank more and did more coke. And then the next morning, I woke up and I think I just had a mo- the, the moment of clarity. W- oh. Whatever you want to call it, I wasn't. It was it was a simple thought. It was like I can continue to drink and live a shitty life, uh, oh. a bad life. <laughs> it's okay. It's dumped. Yeah. They oh. can, maybe <laughs> not. You get to hear that <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and you might have gotten Sorry. to hear that on the actual radio. 